If you're 16 years old watching this video right now, you have a unique opportunity that you will never ever again have in your entire life and I feel compelled to tell you about it. See, if you're 16 right now, you likely still live with your parents, you have no living expenses, and you can save every single dollar that you earn. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down my three-step proven process to show you how to go from the broke, awkward teenager that you are to being a fucking baller with 100 grand in the bank in literally just two years. Now, if you're wondering where this strategy came from and why I'm you know, able to talk about it, it's because I literally did this exact same thing when I was 16. I went from a baby-faced kid with a driver's license who barely had $1,000 in the bank to buying a house, a Tesla, and making over $300,000 before I turned 19. And today, I'm gonna be showing you the three-step process that I use to do exactly this and show you how you can do it for yourself and not to mention all of the mistakes that I learned along the way so you can shortcut this process and actually get further than I did in the same amount of time. Starting with step number one, which I like to call the penny pincher. So basically what this is, again, when I started the video, I was talking about how, you know, when you're eight, when you're 16 years old, you live with your parents, you have no living expenses, right? And so the problem is like most people when they're 16, whenever they make money, they just spend it on stupid shit, right? Cause they have no bills. There's nothing they have to put it towards. So they just buy dumb shit. You can do that. But if you want to make hundred K in two years, you cannot do that. So basically don't do that if you're trying to do what I'm about to describe. So essentially whenever you're uh, 16 years old and you start making money, you got to get some kind of a job, right? Now you have a couple different options and this is probably the first mistake that I made when I was 16. But you have a couple different options as far as what you can do. I mean, every restaurant will hire you. You could work at a fast food joint. You could work at retail. Like there's a million things out there, right? When I got my first job, it was actually at a restaurant, which taught me, you know, customer service and talking to people all day, which I think was a, you know, really good thing for me. But ultimately like looking back and what I would recommend for you to do is get a job where you have to learn sales or you learn some other skill. But I mean, sales is like, by far the best one you could possibly learn. But some skill related to sales where you're having to talk to people and you like learn to do something that's going to be applicable later on. And you'll see why you'll see why I say that in just a second. So you're gonna wanna get like a traditional job, like a door-to-door -door sales job would be a perfect example, like door knocking for solar um, or selling something door-to-door -door like pest control. Um, to get you out of your comfort zone a little bit so you have to learn that skill of sales. Something like that, or it could even be like, you know, calling, cold calling for some, some business or some company. Find a job where you have to learn sales, you have to learn some skill set, and you also get paid a decent amount, right? And so basically what you want to do is literally just save every single dollar that you earn. What I did when I was 16 is I had a little spreadsheet where I would track every time I got paid and I would also track every time I spent money. So like if I bought a freaking soda from the gas station, I would go in and put a dollar into my spreadsheet and that would subtract from my overall total. Um, you basically just wanna be the cheapest bastard you know. And like this, this part kind of sucks, but you really just have to like enjoy being cheap. And I know that sounds like not really fun because you probably wanna go you know buy white claws or you know, smoke weed or whatever. But if you can like have the discipline to actually save most of your money and like save most of your money and just keep it, keep tabs of what you do in your spreadsheet. And ultimately what you'll realize is like every time you buy something, if you have to put it in and like make a note that you bought money and you're taking away from your savings goal, you're going to realize that you spend less. So your goal in step one is to basically just save $5,000. That's the target you want to hit is saving $5,000 and having 5K in cash. Another thing I recommend doing as well, like during this phase, is if you can max out a Roth IRA, that's a great thing to do, just because that's money that kind of sets aside and slowly builds your net worth. That's something that I did as well at this stage. But basically, to kind of sum it up, step one, you're literally just getting like a basic job, right? Um, ideally something where you can learn a, a skill or something where you can learn sales and you're trying to stack cash. Like you're literally saving every penny you earn. You're going to be the most boring person in your friend group. I hate to say it. Um, but you're not going to be like going out and buying shit, literally just save every single dollar that you earn. And your, your goal here is just to max out your skills and then max out your money because you're going to need this money to make these bigger plays that we're going to do later on. That is step one. Moving on to step number two. So you've saved $5,000, congratulations. You're more disciplined than 99% of people your age. A plus, you get a thumbs up. Step number two is what I call the boring business. So I'll tell you my personal situation. When I was 16, 17 going, uh, I think I was 16, 
worked at a job for about a year. And then when I was 17, I went to this other step. So it took me a while to save up this money because I was working for like minimum wage, 725. This is basically going to be like a location dependent uh, service based business, like lawn care, pressure washing, window washing, a moving business, cleaning, but something like that where you're basically providing a service for people in your local area where it's really easy to get customers, but your profit margins are high. So what I personally did is I started a lawn care business. So basically what I did is I would post something on nextdoor.com, right? Which is like a, it's like social, it's like Facebook, but just for neighborhoods basically. So I'd post something on nextdoor.com. Um, hey, you know, offering lawn care service in the area. Here's my phone number. Call me and get a quote. Like literally that simple. And so basically what ended up happening is like over the course of time, I just started building up this network of people where I had recurring money coming in every week because I was going out and mowing lawns. The whole point of step two is you're leveling up from being in a job. And now you get to apply a lot of those sales skills that you learn and a lot of those people skills and the interpersonal skills or whatever that you learn from working the traditional job and being a freaking cheap ass in step one. And you get to use that to invest into step number two, which is the boring business. And so this is going to allow you to raise up the amount of money you're able to earn. You can very easily earn $2,000 a week while you're still in school doing one of these businesses. So when I was doing lawn care, mowing just a few yards a week, granted it started to stack up when I had time over the summer, I was making like $2,000 a week as a 17 year old, just banking that money. And lawn care probably isn't even the best one of these options. I've seen videos on YouTube where people make $1,000 a day doing window cleaning, um, pressure washing is a great one too. Basically you want to invest the money that you saved in step one into starting this second business. And this is just going to level up your income. So basically in this step, you want to save 40 to $50,000. Now I know that sounds freaking crazy, but level with me here for a second. It's really not that hard. If you're making two grand a week, which is so doable, any of those like four businesses I just talked about, lawn care, pressure washing, window cleaning, or moving business, and you just save all of that money, you can do it within just a few months. We have two whole years to get to this 100K mark. So you wanna save like 40 to 50K doing this. And I know that, again, I know that sounds crazy, but if you just stick with the plan, you're saving more than you earn and you're sticking and building that business, like that money is going to build up over time. Like there's no way it doesn't. And again, this is a, this is a two, two and a half year plan. So you really do have to stick with the process. And at this phase, again, you're going to be leveling up your skill sets in business. You're going to be leveling up your skill sets in sales. And all these things are going to translate later on uh, when we get to phase number three. You may be thinking, and like this is one trap that I personally fell into. Is so I was building this lawn care business, which I mean, you can realistically, that could be your lifetime business if that's what you wanted. For me, though, that's not what I wanted. And you probably don't either. Because the thing is, when you have a business like that, you're location dependent. So if I had scaled my lawn care business to, you know, let's say 10 mil a year, which was my goal at a certain point, my entire life would be based in one area, meaning I can't travel, I can't go here, I can't like, I have no freedom over my location because my whole business is tied to one area. So I personally like to build the type of business that I'm about to talk about, which is an internet based business. And so basically the whole point of step two is just leveling up from the traditional job and it's really low risk. It's a really easy business to start. Like if you fail at mowing lawns and making money, you just suck at business. Like I hate to say that, but like it's really hard to not make money. It's a very low barrier to entry, very easy to get started. You don't have to be that smart or anything, but you're able to just stack cash and get in the routine of working hard, waking up and just making money, right? So again, uh, lawn care, landscaping, window cleaning, pressure washing, moving business, any of those like blue collar type businesses are all great options. The third step, getting to step number three, this is where you're going to actually start an internet business. So going back to my situation, at this point, I'd been the waiter at a restaurant. I'd stacked some cash. I started a lawn care business and I realized, okay, like this is not where I want to be in 10 years. I need to start something else. And so my personal business that I started was drop shipping. So I did e-commerce. So I buy stuff from China, ship it to the U S and obviously I was the middleman. Uh, and I made a bunch of money on this bracelet store where I was selling bracelets that would plant trees in Australia, right? During the whole Australia fires. It's like, Hey, I have this bracelet for every bracelet you buy, it'll plant a tree and we'll donate to Australia. 
And then obviously I got to keep some of the money because I was selling them a bracelet, right? So that was my business. Uh, ultimately, I was doing like $100,000 a month with that, which was really, really cool. But essentially that was what allowed me to scale from like doing this lawn care thing to making like, I was profiting about 30 grand a month uh, for a few months there consistently. This was not a sustainable business for me because I built it on a shaky foundation. And so this is like one of the things that I would tell my younger self or I would tell you watching this is whenever you're starting this third business, like realistically, this business could be one that lasts you years into the future if you build it the right way. And, and the biggest mistake that I made, because again, if you kind of recall in step number one and step number two, we're just talking about stacking cash. Like we're saving all the money and we're not really like buying anything. You're getting into this whole rhythm of like save everything because that's what you have to do early on. But one of the biggest things that you should do if you're trying to do this is buy knowledge, invest in courses, invest in mentors and invest in learning things faster. Because basically you can either learn it with time or you can learn it with money. And that's one of the things I learned later on. But if I could go back, what I would tell myself, because realistically, like the drop shipping store I just told you about, if I had stuck with that, I could still be running that today. And that could have been an eight figure brand, like no question. I was doing hundred K a month in sales, not even knowing what I was doing. And had I known what I was doing, because if I had bought courses and invested in mentors and been talking to the right people, easily would have scaled that faster. So I say all that to say, when you start getting to that step three, right? Again, doesn't really take that much to learn how to do a window cleaning business or a lawn care. Like, don't really worry about it. But once you have enough money in the bank, once you have even like 20, 30 grand in the bank, now you need to start buying courses freaking religiously. And that's what I would recommend doing is you, you're only gonna invest in two things at this point, stocks and courses. Stocks because it doesn't take any mental energy. You just throw it in a stock and leave it there. And courses because you can shortcut that learning curve and you can, I like Alex Ramosi says this. If you don't know who Alex Ramosi is, look him up as soon as you're done with this video. You can drag your future into the present. So for me, that future was, you know, 100K. I was able to drag that from like most people get there maybe at 25, 30. I was able to drag that into 18, 17, 18, right? And the way I was able to do that was by shortcutting it. But going back, if I were to, you know, tell my younger self something, I would say invest way more money in courses and not only invest in the courses, but implement religiously, right? Like really dive into those courses and just take it as like freaking word, take notes on it as you're going through it and just implement, implement, implement. Step three, you're going to start like an internet business. So the business I started again was the e-commerce business. Um, you can start an e-commerce business. You can start an agency, which is another great option. I mean, if you probably have seen Iman Godzi is a, a ton of content on that. That's personally what I have right now is an agency. Um, you can do Facebook ads. There's all the stuff coming out with like the AI agency, all different things like that. Um, there's tons of different like agencies you can start, but the biggest thing that I would recommend when starting an agency, and I'll kind of go on a little tangent with that is whenever you start an agency, you want to find one particular industry or one particular niche. Now, bonus points, if the niche or industry you pick was the, is the same one that you do in business number two. So let's say you start a pressure washing business. If all of a sudden in step number three is an agency, you're now doing Facebook ads for people that own pressure washing uh, businesses, boom, like immediate synergy there. It's gonna work like a freaking dream because you already have all that experience in that industry. So for me, what I did, the agency I have now, I help insurance agents and I used to sell life insurance after all this other stuff, right? So different story, I'll kind of go into that in a different video. But basically, the agency you start, if you can have some experience in that, it's gonna make that so much easier. But if you don't have that, that's also totally fine. Basically what you wanna do is find a need, find a problem, right? Most people don't know how to do marketing still to this day. And you just pick a niche, learn everything you can about that niche, about that target customer, and then start solving the problems. That's if you go the agency route, the e-commerce route. Um, if you guys want me to make more content about that, I can. Um, happy to make content about whatever you guys wanna learn more about when I'm kinda of going through this stuff. Those are kinda of the two different routes. I won't go crazy deep into it cause I'm not trying to make this video crazy long, but agency route, e-commerce route, both vi very viable options for step number three, which is your internet business. So step three is literally what's gonna take you to 100K. So you literally just need to keep those same saving habits. And now that you've gotten into a higher income skill set, 
the money that you're able to make is so much like it's there's so much more con it's more consequential right if that makes sense so you can do 70 80 90 k in a month with an agency or an e-com biz and that money you're able to just put aside in profit with that being said that literally like that exact process that exact step by step saving a bunch of money in the beginning starting a boring business and then transitioning into an internet business that's literally everything that I did. Like, that's exactly what I did. I had, worked as a waiter, started a lawn care business, and I did drop shipping. And, like, that's all it took to get to 100K. Now, the reason that I lay it out this way is because, like, the reason I start the boring business first before the internet business is because there's so much less risk and it's so much more simple. So, like, for me, I was trying to do drop shipping the whole time, but, like, lawn care was just easy. Like, it just worked. And so I was able to make more money. Whereas when you try, like most people, they'll skip the boring business. They'll go straight to like, I'm going to try to figure out an agency. I'm going to try to figure out this. And they're just like, they're losing all of this knowledge and all of this money that they could be stacking. And they're not really ready for that, like the bigger boy business yet. So that's why I recommend going job, boring, simple, local business, internet business. So with that being said, uh, I know this is kind of a little bit like rambly, but I just wanted to kind of spit this all out, tell it to you guys exactly uh, how I learned it and what I would do differently. So with that being said, that is the exact three-step process to go from broke 16-year-old to 18-year-old with 100K in the bank. If you guys have any questions about how this whole process works, how I did it, drop them in the comments down below, and I'm happy to go more in depth on that in another video. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video and tuning in, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.